first class we will discuss uh, root fruits test today we will solve one problem based on that test so today we will discuss a problem on root Fruits test. Now, in this problem, the characteristic equation is given. In this problem, the characteristic equation is given. It is two s cube plus. 3 a square plus 1 plus k c s plus 2 which is equal to 0 and k c is the proportional gain of the controller. Now, we need to compare this characteristics equation with the standard polynomial form of characteristics equation. What is the standard form? That is a naught s cube plus a 1 s square plus a 2 s plus a 3 which is equal to 0. This is a standard form of characteristics equation. Now, it is obvious that a naught equals to a 1 is equal to 3, a 2 is equal to 1 plus k c and a 3 is equal to a naught a 1 and a 3 these are positive fine a naught a 1 and a 3 these are positive coefficients but we cannot say about a 2 fine but if a 2 is negative there is no need of further analysis we can directly say that the closed loop process is definitely <coughs> unstable Therefore, for the time being we will assume that 1 plus k c is positive quantity and we will try to find the stability condition based on the value of k c fine. So, we are assuming all coefficients starting from a 1 to a 3 are positive coefficients. Then we cannot say whether the system is stable or unstable if all the coefficients are positive, we cannot say whether the system is stable or unstable. So, to make any conclusion, we need to go for further analysis. And in the next step, what is required to do? We need to constitute root array. We need to constitute root array root array consists of n plus 1 number of rows fine it includes n plus 1 number of rows here n is 3 so root array should constitute with four rows so this is a row 1 row 2 row 3, row 4. Now, we will just write all the coefficients of characteristics equation in the first and second row only. So, first one is 2 which is a naught, second one is a 1 which is 3, then next one is 1 plus k c next one is 2 and there is no more coefficient. So, we can put 
0 0 fine. So, what will be the first element of the third row? Can you determine the first element of the third row? 3 multiplied by 1 plus k c minus 4 divided by 3. What will be the second element? Second element will be 0. Fine. Then what is the first element in the fourth row? What is the first element in the fourth row? 2. Fine. So, we got all the elements in the first column based on which we will proceed for stability analysis. We got the all elements in the first column. Fine. So, the first column we can write as 2, 3, then third element is 3 k c minus 1 divided by 3. Can I write the element of third row and last element is 2. So, this is the first column. This is the first column in the root array. Now, we will try to consider some values of k c arbitrarily. Suppose, if k c is equal to 1, what about the third element in the first column? The third element in the first column becomes 2 third. So, the system is stable or unstable? System is stable because all the elements in the first column are positive. So, the closed loop system is stable when k c is equal to 1 because all the elements in the first column are positive. We will consider another value. Suppose k c is equal to 1 by 6. If k c is equal to 1 by 6, the third element in the first column becomes how much? Minus 1 by 6. So, the process is the closed loop system is stable or unstable? Unstable. If k c is equal to 1 by 6, the closed loop system becomes unstable. Now, if, if this is unstable, how many poles lie in the right half plane? 2. Because if we consider k c is equal to 1 by 6, then the first column becomes this. If we consider k c equals 1 by 6, the first column becomes this. Now, here two sign changes are involved. One sign change is from second row to third row. Second sign change is from third row to fourth row. Fine. Since two sign changes are involved, so if k c is equal to 1 by 6, two poles lie in the right half plane. In the next, we will try to find the critical stability condition. We will try to find the, no, before critical stability condition, we will find the stability condition. We will try to find the stability condition. I mean, for what value of k c, the closed loop system should always be stable. Can you find that? So, the system will always be positive, uh, always be stable when 3 k c minus 1 divided by 3 is greater than 0. 
then we can say that the closed loop system remains always stable. So, from this we can find that K C should be greater than one third. So, this is the stability condition. This is the stability condition. If K C is greater than one third, then the closed loop system remains always stable. In the next we will discuss the critical stability condition. Critical stability condition. See one thing is clear that if K C is greater than one third, then the closed loop system is stable. If K C is less than one third, then the system is unstable. Now, if K C is equal to one third, then we can say that this is the critical stability condition. So, this is the critical stability condition when K C is equal to one third, K C is equal to one third is the stability condition. Can you determine the third element of the first column when K C is equal to one third? <coughs> 0. When K C is equal to one third, the third element in the first column becomes 0. Then what will be the all elements in the first column? First element is 2, second element is 3, third element is 0. So, up to third row we can determine the elements in the first column, fine. If, if the elements in the third row vanish, then what about the closed loop response? We have discussed in the last class sustained oscillation. Sustained oscillation. So, if all the elements from the third row vanish, then we can conclude that the closed loop response provides sustained oscillation, I mean oscillatory response with constant amplitude. So, in this situation we can say that we get sustained oscillations when K C is equal to one third. Fine. When K C is equal to one third, the closed loop response provides oscillatory response with constant amplitude. That means, the poles lie on the imaginary axis, agree? It indicates that the poles lie on the imaginary axis. Can we determine those poles, which are basically complex conjugate poles with real part is 0? We can determine. Say this is first row, this is second row, this is third row, this is fourth row. Suppose the elements vanish from pth row. fine. Suppose all the elements vanish from pth row. Now, to determine the complex conjugate poles with real part equals 0, we need to take the elements from p minus 1th row. Fine. 
to determine the complex conjugate poles with real parts equal 0, we have to take the elements from p minus 1th row. That means, if we write the other elements, if we write the other elements, then the root array becomes like this. Agree? This is the root array. We are saying that this is pitch row. Now, all the elements vanish from this row. Now, we will take the elements just from p minus 1 row. So, one element is 3, another element is 2, which is equal to 0. And you remember, we only take the elements from p minus 1th row and from first and second column. Fine. All the elements vanish from p row, we will take the elements from p minus 1th row and from first and second column. So, we can write 3a square plus 2 equals 0. By solving this, we can write is equals plus minus z root over of 2 by 3. So, these are the two complex conjugate poles which lie on the imaginary axis. So, when K c is equal to one third, we get sustained oscillation and the corresponding complex conjugate roots are these, which lie on the imaginary axis. Fine. In the next, we will discuss another technique, which is root locus technique. In the next, we will discuss another technique called root locus technique. The root for which test was purely algebraic but this root locus technique is a graphical technique. Root locus technique is a graphical technique. Fine. Now, question arises how we can produce the graph we can make the graph by plotting all the poles, all the roots of the characteristics equation in the complex plane. So, we can produce the graph by plotting the roots of the characteristics equation, the roots of the characteristics equation in the complex plane. Fine. This is a graphical technique and we can produce the graph by plotting all the roots of the characteristics equation in the complex plane. The location of the roots is seen at a glance in the plot. So, the location of all the roots is seen 
at a glance. in the plot and we can conclude on stability by seeing the overall picture fine. So, we have the characteristics equation we can determine the roots now we will consider one complex plane. and we will locate all the roots in this plane. That means, at a glance we can see all the position of all the roots in this graph and we can conclude on stability based on this overall picture. This is the root locus technique. Now, we will start to discuss this root locus technique taking one example fine. We will discuss this root locus technique taking one problem. The closed loop block diagram is required to develop first. Suppose we are considering the process is under a PI a, a P only controller. A process is controlled by a P only controller. That means, the transfer function of the controller G C equals K C. The final control element, the transfer function of the final control element G F equals 2. Fine the transfer function of the process we are considering as g p equals 0 0.25 divided by s plus 1 multiplied by 2 s plus 1. So, this is a second order process, this is the transfer function of the process output is y bar fine. Transfer function of the measuring device g m equals 2. The output of this measuring device is suppose y and the output of the comparator is epsilon. So, this is the closed loop diagram. this is the closed loop block diagram. This is the closed loop block diagram for servo case or regulatory case or for both. This is for servo case because we are considering no disturbance. Now, you will analyze the closed loop system based on root locus technique. Can we determine, can we find the characteristics equation? Find the characteristics equation. The general form of characteristics equation is 1 plus G C, G P, Z F g m equals 0. This is the general form. Now, we substitute all the individual transfer functions in this general form.
if we substitute all the individual transfer functions we get 1 plus k c divided by s plus 1 multiplied by 2 s plus 1 equals 0 fine. This is the transfer function closed loop transfer function. Now, another form also we write that is 1 plus z suffix o l equals 0, where z suffix o l is the transfer function of the open loop system. Now, comparing the last two equations, we can write z o l equals k c divided by s plus 1 to s plus 1. This is the form of the open loop system. Can you find the poles of this open loop transfer function? What are the poles? The open loop transfer function has two poles. One is at s equals half, another one is at s equals minus 1. Fine. So, two poles are there. What about zeros? No zeros. So, there are two poles and no zeros of the open loop transfer function. Remember, open loop transfer function G O L. Now, we will try to find the roots of the characteristics equation. So, our characteristics equation is our characteristics equation is 1 plus k c divided by s plus 1 multiplied by 2 s plus 1 equals 0. Now, we can write this equation by simplifying as 2 a square plus 3 s plus 1 plus k c equals 0. Can we write the characteristics equation in this form? Fine. So, this is the characteristics equation which we got after simplifying. Then we can write the root as r equals minus 3 plus minus root over 9 minus 8 1 plus k c divided by 4. The characteristics equation is in quadratic form. Obviously, there are two roots. So, we will write as R 1 and R 2. R 1 is minus 3 by 4 plus root over of 1 minus 8 k c divided by 4. This is the first root second root r 2 is equal to minus 3 by 4 minus root over of 1 minus 8 k c divided by 4. This is the second root. Now, we will generate the roots varying k c value from 0 to infinity. The root locus diagram is produced varying k c from 0 to infinity. So, we will just produce one plot varying k c and we will determine the corresponding 
R 1 and R 2 values. So, first we will consider K C if equals 0. Then what is R 1? How much is R 1? You keep on determining the values. If K C is equal to 0, how much is R 1? Minus half, how much is R 2? Minus 1. If K C is 1 by 8, how much is R 1? minus 3 by 4 and R 2. So, both roots are equal. If K C is equal to 1 by 4, how much is R 1? minus 3 by 4 plus J 1 by 4, another one will be minus 3 by 4 minus j 1 by 4, basically they are complex conjugate roots. If we consider K C equals half, R 1 becomes minus 3 by 4 plus j root 3 by 4 and second root will be minus 3 by 4 minus j root 3 by 4. Next, we will consider K C equals 1 then the R 1 becomes minus 3 by 4 plus j root 7 by 4 and second root is minus 3 by 4 minus j root over 7 by 4. Like this we can go up to infinity, fine. Now, based on these data, I mean we will produce in the next the root locus diagram putting these two roots. So, our complex plane is this one, this is real axis, this is indicating imaginary axis. When K C is equal to 0, R 1 is minus half, save R 1 is minus half indicates this point. R 1 is minus half and corresponding K C value is 0. When K C equals 0, another root R 2 is minus 1, corresponding K C value is 0. So, when K C equals 0, these two roots we have determined and they are located now in the complex plane. In the next we will consider suppose K C equals 1 fourth, no before that we will consider K C equals 1 by 8. If K C is equal to 1 by 8, then we have only one root that is minus 3 by 4 and minus 3 by 4 is in between minus 1 and minus half, agree? Corresponding K C value I am writing here that is 1 by 8. 
Next, we will locate the roots when k c equals one fourth. See, when k c equals one fourth, we have two complex conjugate roots. Real part is minus three by four. That means this point. And complex part is one by four. And another one is minus one by four. So I am just writing here. This root corresponds to k c equals one fourth. This is also. We got when k c equals one fourth. So these two points we obtained when k c equals zero. These two points we obtained when k c equals one fourth. The single root we obtained when k c equals one by eight. Next we will consider k c equals half. Then these two roots we can locate in the complex plane. K C equals half. K C equals half. You see the real part is same, minus three by fourth. Fine. Only the imaginary part is gradually increasing with the increase of K C value. The imaginary part is increasing with the increase of KC value. So by this way, it will increase up to infinity as KC approaches infinity. Now we will just connect all these points. So we get the branches like this. The direction is this, this, like this. So these are the branches. By connecting all the points, we got this picture. So this is when K C K C approaches infinity. This is when K C approaches infinity. Now this is the root locus diagram for the example system. This is the root locus diagram. For the example system, which we produced, locating the roots of the characteristics equation. Now we will make some remarks based on this plot. We will note down few important points based on this plot. So, how many root loci are there? How many branches are there? Number of root loci or number of branches is equal to two. That means number of poles of ZOL. So, we can conclude based on this root locus diagram that the number of root loci or branches equals number of poles of ZOL that is 2. Fine, 2 branches are there and we obtained also 2 poles of the open loop transfer function, open loop transfer function here. Second point is the root loci originate from which point? Minus 
रूट लॉ की ओरिजिनेट फ्रॉम द पोल्स ऑफ जीओ एल दैट इज आई मीन देयर माइनस हाफ एंड माइनस वन एग्री द रूट लॉ की ओरिजिनेट फ्रॉम द पोल्स ऑफ जीओ एल द पोल्स आर माइनस हाफ एंड माइनस वन कैन आई से द रूट लॉ की ओरिजिनेट वैन के सी इक्वल्स जीरो यस द रूट लॉ की ओरिजिनेट वैन के सी इक्वल्स जीरो एंड द रूट लॉ की टर्मिनेट when k c equals infinity recall that the root locus diagram is produced varying k c from 0 to infinity so when k c equals 0 i mean the root law ki originate when k c equals 0 and root law ki terminate when k c equals infinity what about the stability is there any crossing of root law key from left side to right side no if you see the root locus diagram it is clear that there is no crossing of root law key from left side to right side that means the closed loop system is stable irrespective of kc value i mean you can take any large value of kc there will not be any instability problem so third point is the closed loop system is stable irrespective of kc value there is no instability problem you can observe another thing that as the value of kc increases the poles of the closed loop system move away from the real axis with the increase of kc value the poles of the closed loop system they are move away from the real axis see here this this root we got when kc equals One fourth. If we increase to K C half, the root is moving away from the real axis in both sides. What it indicates? Oscillatory response. Fine. So you write as the value of K C increases, the poles of the closed loop system. the poles of the closed loop system move away from the real axis that means the response becomes more oscillatory the response becomes more oscillatory so these are the conclusions we can make based on the results we obtain in the next we will try to find some general features based on the results we obtained in solving this problem we will try to obtain some general characteristics based on the results we obtained in solving the previous problem general characteristics of a root locus plot
fine. Now, root locus plot is produced by plotting by locating the roots of the characteristics equation. The general form of the characteristics equation is written as 1 plus g c g p g f g m equals 1 plus g o l equals 0. This is the general form of the characteristics equation. Now, we will write this equation as 1 plus k p k c k f k m n s by d s equals 0. We are writing the characteristics equation in this form where k p, k c, k f, k m are the gains of process, gain of the controller, gain of the final control element, gain of the measuring device. Fine. And n s is a polynomial of order n, n s is a polynomial of order n. Similarly, if in the denominator another polynomial exists that is d s, d s is the polynomial of order r. Fine. These are the two polynomials. Now, for any physically realizable system, R should be physical realizability, realizability. R should be less than or equals to n. For any physically realizable system, R should be yeah, it will be just opposite. R should be greater than or equals to n. Fine. Now, we will just simplify the characteristics equation. If we simplify the characteristics equation, we get d s plus k p k c k f k m n s which is equal to 0. Suppose this is equation 1 and this is equation 2. Fine. Now, what is the order of this equation? What is the order of this equation? R fine. If r is greater than n, then definitely if the order of this equation is r. So, the number of roots of this characteristics equation is the number of poles of the z o l. We can write that number of roots of this characteristics equation is equal to number of poles of z o l. 
fine and that is equal to r. So, this is the first characteristics. Next, I mean the second characteristics that we will discuss So, in the next we will discuss that the root law key originate when K c equals 0 and it terminate when K c approaches infinity. That means, it originates at the poles, terminate at the zeros. Fine. Now, we got the characteristics equation as d s plus k p k c k f k m n s which is equal to 0, which we got in the last slide as equation 2. Now, first we will consider k c is equal to 0. So, what the characteristics equation gets? I mean the characteristics equation becomes d s equals 0. When k c is equal to 0, d s becomes 0. So, we should start the root Locke diagram plotting the roots of d s equals 0. We should start the root Locke diagram plotting the roots of d s equals 0. That means, the root lock e originate at the poles of the z o l fine. Next, we will consider k c tends to infinity. If k c approaches infinity, what is what form of the characteristics equation we get? We have to write the characteristics equation by this way d s by k c plus k p k f k m n s equals 0. Now, when k c approaches 0, we get k p k f k m n s equals 0. So, it should we should end the root locus diagram plotting the roots of the n s equals 0. So, it proves that the root locus diagram terminate when k c tends to infinity. Thank you.